The arrogant aliens shrieked in agony as human fists crushed their exoskeletons, snapping limbs like twigs, with blue alien blood spraying across the star-strewn void of space. The look of shock on the insectoids' flat faces made it clear they had fucked up bad, attacking a human freighter without knowing the crew were battle-hardened Terrans. Aliens always seemed to underestimate humanity, a mistake they tended to only make once. Philip Simpson, a grizzled ex-marine turned space trucker, wiped the azure gore off his fists. He stomped a few more times to finish off the boarding party that had blasted their way onto his ship, the Orion's Blade. The whine of the hull breach alarms mixed with the groans of the wounded alien raiders bleeding out on the deck. Philip had been hauling a cargo of rare minerals through this remote sector when the distress signal caught his attention. Some unidentified species was hitting a frontier colony hard. The signal was weak and garbled, but the words under attack and need assistance came through clear enough. Philip hesitated, tempted to just slingshot around the system and mind his own business. Getting involved in someone else's fight was a good way to end up space dust. But the guilt gnawed at him. Innocents were dying down there while he had the firepower to help. The Orion's Blade was a heavily modified freighter, over-equipped with the kind of banned weapons and military-grade defences that were needed out in the lawless fringes. As he approached the jungle planet, he saw a massive alien fleet bombarding the surface, while smaller attack craft swarmed like locusts. The attackers were like nothing he'd seen before, organic-looking ships, all curves and pulsing lights. Dodging plasma blasts, Philip scanned the colony and saw the handful of survivors holed up in a fortified bunker, Comms were jammed, no way to coordinate, and the place would be glass in minutes. One freighter against an armada. Suicide. But maybe he could pull their stingers long enough for the colonists to evacuate to the mines. Buy them a shot at living. Gritting his teeth, Philip gunned the engines and plunged into the fight with weapons hot. If he failed here, the colony was ash. And humanity couldn't afford to give one more inch to the alien menace. Philip just prayed the Orion's blade was half as tough as the shipyard scrappers claimed. Time for round two. Astra's holographic display flashed with streams of data, as the AI rapidly analyzed the alien armada bearing down on them. Philip, I have identified the attackers. They are the Sheliak, an insectoid species known for conquering and subjugating other worlds. Scans show their flagship is emitting a unique energy signature likely powering their advanced weapons and shields. Philip narrowed his eyes at the tactical readout, the flagship a pulsing red dot amidst the swarm of smaller craft. He knew taking out the command ship was their only shot at turning the tide, but getting close would mean flying through a wall of plasma fire and kamikaze fighters. All right, Astra, mark me a path to that dreadnought, and divert all power to engines and forward shields. We're going to need every bit of speed and armor to punch through. The Orion's blade surged forward, afterburners flaring, as Philip wove through the oncoming horde. A white-knuckled dance of death as energy beams crackled past and the hull shook from near misses. His fingers flew across the weapons console, sending volleys of missiles and cannon fire into the mass of chitin and metal. Alien ships burst apart in clouds of shrapnel and ichor, but for each one destroyed, a dozen more pressed the attack. Proximity alarms blared as the flagship loomed ahead, a monstrous silhouette bristling with turrets and spines. Suddenly the comms crackled with an incoming transmission. The viewscreen filled with the visage of a Sheliak, compound eyes glittering with malevolence above a grotesque maw of fangs. Human vessel, this is Commander Horus of the Sheliak Imperium. You have fought with tenacity, but your struggle is futile. Surrender now, or watch as we reduce the surface of this world to molten slag. Philip slammed his fist on the console, his voice a growl of defiance. Horace, you picked the wrong species to fuck with. We don't bow to tyrannical bugs. His fingers stabbed the firing controls, sending a salvo of missiles streaking towards the flagship. The alien's chitinous face contorted in rage as the projectiles hammered into the dreadnought's shields, overloading them in a cascade of sparks and smoke. Destroy that ship! Leave nothing but atoms! Horus screeched, the transmission cutting out in a haze of static. The Orion shuddered as every Sheliak gun turned to target it. Consoles sparked and metal screamed, 
as the barrage tore through the freighter's armor. Warning lights flashed crimson across the bridge, and acrid smoke belched from shattered conduits. Philip coughed on the fumes, hands flying across the helm, desperately trying to evade the firestorm. He knew they couldn't absorb this punishment much longer, but he pictured the terrified faces of the colonists below, huddled in their bunkers, praying for a miracle. He couldn't let them down, not while he still drew breath. All power to weapons. Prepare for a final run on the flagship. If we're going down, we're taking those bastards with us, he roared over the klaxons and groans of buckling hull plates. But as he steeled himself for one last charge, Astra's sensors pinged with new contacts. Philip stared in disbelief at the tactical display, a cluster of fresh warp signatures, human ships emerging from the void. And at their centre, a massive battle cruiser, its flanks shimmering with the telltale distortion of an assault carrier's deployment bays. A flicker of hope kindled in Philip's chest. Against all odds, reinforcements had arrived, the cavalry riding to the rescue in the eleventh hour. But even as his heart leapt, cold dread coiled in his gut, because he knew, with icy certainty, that this battle was far from over, and the price of victory might be more than any of them could bear to pay. As the Orion's hull groaned under the strain, the view screen flickered with an incoming transmission. Admiral Nora Hawkins appeared, her sharp features etched with urgency. Philip, our scans show the survivors are holed up in a research outpost on the surface. They were studying some kind of alien artifact when the Sheliac hit them out of nowhere. Whatever they found, the bugs want it bad. Philip gritted his teeth. What's the plan, Admiral? We'll keep these bastards busy up here. I need you to lead a strike team planetside, secure that artifact and evac the survivors. The Titan's fury is sending over a squad of marines to back you up. He nodded grimly. Another suicide mission, but leaving those colonists to die wasn't an option. Roger that, we'll get it done. The Orion shuddered as it docked with the battlecruiser's airlock. Philip strode into the cargo bay, where a dozen heavily armed soldiers stood at attention. One man stepped forward, a young lieutenant with a cocky grin. Lieutenant Jake Ramsey, sir, heard you could use some extra firepower. Philip sized him up. The kid had a swagger that screamed trouble. Just follow orders and try not to get killed, Ramsey. As the Orion plunged through the atmosphere, the hull rattled and the temperature spiked. They were in for a rough ride. Suddenly, the ship lurched violently, throwing them off balance. Alarms blared and red lights flashed. Hull breach in Section 4. Astra reported. Sheliac boarding pod attached. Philip cursed. They were sitting ducks. He turned to the Marines. Repel those boarders. Don't let them near the bridge. The soldiers charged into the corridors as insectoid screeches echoed through the ship. The close quarters battle was brutal and bloody. Philip and the Marines fought with desperate ferocity. Bullets tore through chitinous armor. Plasma scorched metal. Warriors on both sides fell in sprays of blood and ichor. They managed to seal the breach, but at a terrible cost. Half the marines lay dead, their bodies strewn among the alien corpses. Ramsay slumped against a wall, his face pale, a deep gash across his chest, leaking crimson. Philip dragged him to the med bay, the ship bucking wildly as they hurtled towards the LZ. Proximity alerts warned of anti-aircraft fire from Shelyak positions. He strapped Ramsey into a cot, praying the cocky kid would pull through. The Orion's blade screamed over the jungle canopy, smoke trailing from its battered hull. As they neared the outpost, a sense of dread knotted in Philip's gut. He knew deep down that the nightmare was only beginning. The Orion's blade shook as it touched down on the scorched earth near the ruined outpost. The air was thick with smoke, and the acrid stench of burnt flesh stung Philip's nostrils. Ramsey and the few remaining marines stumbled down the ramp, weapons drawn. They moved cautiously through the rubble, boots crunching on shattered glass and twisted metal. Sheliac corpses littered the ground, their exoskeletons cracked open and oozing green ichor. The eerie stillness was broken only by the crackle of flames and the distant echoes of battle still raging in orbit. As they approached the main building, a flicker of movement caught Philip's eye.
he raised his fist, signaling the others to halt. Slowly, a figure emerged from the shadows, hands raised. It was a woman in a tattered lab coat, her face smudged with soot and blood. Don't shoot, she called out, her voice hoarse. I'm Dr. Eliza Hoffman. There are survivors inside. Philip lowered his weapon and stepped forward. What happened here, Doctor? Dr. Hoffman's eyes were haunted. We were studying an artifact, a piece of technology unlike anything we've ever seen. It's ancient, possibly older than any known civilization. But it's not just a relic. It emits some kind of energy field that affects living organisms. She led them into the building, stepping over fallen beams and shattered equipment. In the central lab, a handful of scientists and security personnel huddled together, their faces gaunt and shell-shocked. The field enhances certain abilities, Dr. Hoffman continued, but it also causes erratic behavior, hallucinations. We were trying to understand it, but then the Sheliak came. They knew about the artifact, wanted to weaponize it. In the center of the room, a metallic object floated in a containment field, pulsing with an eerie blue light. Philip felt a strange tingling in his skin as he approached it, a whisper at the edge of his mind. We need to get this thing out of here, he said, tearing his gaze away, and evacuate the survivors. They quickly loaded the artifact into a shielded case and herded the survivors back to the Orion's blade. As the ship's engines whined to life, a warning klaxon blared. Proximity alert, Astra reported. Massive Sheliak ground force incoming. Philip cursed under his breath. They were so close. He watched on the view screen as a phalanx of insectoid warriors marched towards them, led by a towering figure in ornate armor. The Sheliak champion stepped forward, brandishing a wicked-looking plasma glaive. Humans! It screeched in broken English. I am Craxus, greatest warrior of the Sheliak. Face me in single combat. The artifact and the glory of victory shall be mine. Ramsay, his face pale from blood loss, stumbled forward. I'll take the bastard on. No, Dr. Hoffman grabbed his arm. You're in no condition to fight. The energy from the artifact is affecting him, making him irrational. But Ramsay shook her off, a manic gleam in his eyes. He charged down the ramp, ignoring Philip's shouts to stand down. The two warriors clashed in a blur of slashing claws and crackling plasma. Ramsay fought with berserker fury, but Craxus was too fast, too strong. A blow sent the marine flying, his armor smoking. The Sheliak loomed over him, glaive raised for the kill. Philip leaped into action, bringing his prototype rifle to bear. The weapon hummed with power as he sighted down the barrel. A searing beam of light erupted from the muzzle, spearing through Craxus's chest. The champion convulsed and collapsed, Icor spurting from the gaping wound. The Sheliak forces, seeing their leader fall, chittered in confusion and fear. They began to retreat, scattering into the ruins. Philip dragged Ramsay back onto the ship, heart hammering. As the Orion's blade lifted off, dodging sporadic plasma fire, he felt a chill run down his spine. They had the artifact, but at what cost? And what other secrets and dangers did it hold? The ship shuddered as it docked with the Titan's fury. Philip stared at the shielded case, the pulsing light within casting eerie shadows on the bulkheads. He couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a long and terrifying journey. As the Titan's fury drifted through the void, Dr. Hoffman and her team huddled around the artifact in the dimly lit lab. They ran their instruments over its pulsing surface, trying to decipher the ancient symbols etched into the metal. But as they worked, a creeping unease began to spread through the ship. Whispers echoed in empty corridors, the words just out of reach. Shadows flickered at the edge of vision, vanishing when confronted. Crew members reported strange dreams, visions of an alien sky and towering spires that defied comprehension. In the mess hall, a young ensign suddenly screamed, his eyes wide with terror. He babbled about a presence in his mind, a vast and ancient consciousness that probed his thoughts. Others began to experience similar phenomena. A engineer lifted a massive crate with ease. A navigator recited star charts she had never seen. Admiral Hawkins, her face lined with worry, 
ordered the artifact sealed in a containment unit deep in the ship's hold. No one goes near that thing without my express permission, she commanded, her voice tight with strain. But in the medical bay, Lieutenant Ramsey writhed on a bed, his wounds festering and his skin taking on a sickly sheen. Dr. Hoffman, examining him under a microscope, recoiled in horror. The artifact's energy had infected him, his cells mutating and rearranging into something inhuman. Suddenly Ramsey convulsed, his body twisting grotesquely, his flesh hardened into a kittenous exoskeleton, his fingers elongating into razor-sharp claws. With a howl of agony and rage, he leapt from the bed, lashing out at the terrified medical staff. Alarms blared as Ramsey rampaged through the ship, his mind consumed by alien thoughts and his body a twisted fusion of human and Sheliak. Marines rushed to contain him, but he tore through them with brutal efficiency, leaving mangled corpses in his wake. Philip, his face grim, cornered Ramsey in a dead-end corridor. The creature that had once been his friend snarled, its compound eyes glittering with madness. Jake, Philip said softly, his weapon trained on the abomination. It's me, Philip. You have to fight it. But Ramsey was beyond reason, beyond salvation. With a screech of rage, he lunged at Philip, claws outstretched. Philip fired, the plasma rounds tearing through Ramsey's chest. The hybrid staggered, Icor splattering the bulkheads, then crumpled to the deck, twitching feebly. Philip lowered his weapon, his hands shaking. He had killed many enemies, but never a friend. He knelt beside Ramsey's body, tears stinging his eyes. The ship shuddered, the deck plates vibrating beneath his feet. On the bridge, Admiral Hawkins stared in disbelief at the sensor readings. A massive Sheliak fleet had emerged from hyperspace, hundreds of ships bearing down on the Titan's fury, and at their head, a monstrous dreadnought, its hull pulsing with malevolent energy. The viewscreen crackled, and the image of Horus appeared, his chitinous face twisted in triumph. Admiral Hawkins, he hissed, his voice dripping with contempt. You have something that belongs to us. Return the artifact, and your deaths will be swift. Hawkins' jaw tightened, her eyes hard as flint. You'll have to come and take it, you son of a bitch. As the Sheliak opened fire, the Titan's fury and its escorts met them head on, a desperate battle erupting in the void. Plasma beams and missiles crisscrossed the darkness, ships exploding in silent fireballs. But even as the human fleet fought with grim determination, it was clear they were outmatched. The Sheliak ships seemed to shrug off damage that would cripple a human vessel, their weapons cutting through shields like paper. In the chaos of the battle, Philip made a fateful decision. He raced to the containment unit, the artifact pulsing with an eerie light. If the Shiliac wanted it so badly, he would use it against them. Ignoring the shouts of Dr. Hoffman and the other scientists, Philip loaded the artifact into a small fighter and blasted out of the hangar bay. He broadcast a taunting message to the Shiliac fleet, daring them to chase him. Horus, his eyes blazing with fury, ordered his ships to pursue. They could not let the artifact fall back into human hands. As Philip led the Sheliak on a desperate chase through the system, weaving between asteroids and skimming the surfaces of gas giants, Dr. Hoffman made a chilling discovery. The artifact was not just a weapon, but a beacon, a signal designed to summon something ancient and terrible from the depths of space, something that had once ruled the galaxy with an iron fist and would do so again if unleashed. With mounting horror, Dr. Hoffman realized that the Sheliak had no idea what they were truly dealing with. By activating the artifact, they had doomed not only themselves, but potentially all life in the universe. Philip, his fighter rocked by plasma blasts and his shields failing, knew that he had only one choice. He had to destroy the artifact, even if it meant sacrificing himself in the process. With a final prayer to whatever gods might be listening, Philip overloaded the artifact's containment unit. The resulting explosion was blinding, a searing lance of light that vaporized Philip's fighter, the pursuing Sheliak ships, and Horus himself. The blast wave rippled outward, tearing through the Sheliak fleet like a scythe. Ships crumpled and shattered, their hulls twisting like tin foil, 
the Titan's fury, battered and limping, emerged from the maelstrom, its crew staring in awe at the destruction wrought. In the aftermath, the few remaining Sheliak ships fled, their dreams of conquest shattered and their leadership destroyed. The artifact, the source of so much death and madness, was gone, reduced to atoms in the heart of a star. The Titan's fury limped back to Earth, its hull scarred and its crew haunted by the horrors they had witnessed. Dr. Hoffman, consumed by guilt and self-loathing, resigned her position and disappeared, seeking to atone for her role in the tragedy. Admiral Hawkins, her faith in the military shattered, retired from active duty, passing the torch to a new generation of soldiers and explorers. The battle had been won, but at a terrible cost. And deep in the cold void of space, an ancient evil stirred. The artifact's destruction had not gone unnoticed. The beings that had created it, the ones who had once ruled the stars, turned their attention to the small blue world that had defied them. Earth, a planet of primitives, of upstarts who dared to challenge the natural order, they would be dealt with in time. For now the Ancient Ones watched and waited and planned. The stage was set for a war that would shake the very foundations of the galaxy, and the name of Philip Simpson, the hero who had given his life to save his species, would echo through the ages, a rallying cry for all who dared to stand against the darkness. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.